this time. Podcast hosted by me, Roly Flash, and uh, featuring the star of the show, the eponymous. Uh, that's not the word. Eponymous? What's the word I'm looking for? Titular. Eponymous also correct. I don't know. Is eponymous also correct? Pride Relating to or being the person or thing to whom or which something is named? Man, oh, oh man. Hell yeah, bitch, it's eponymous. Wow. That's Andy I should have known. The gorgeous yeah. son in question. And with us, as always, is Ryerson's favorite podcasting program student in year, I can't really remember, but I think seven of 20. No, 20 sure. year program. It's ever hard now, Ramirez. Shout out all my Ryerson heads out there. What's up? The Ryerson heads. Ryerson <laughs> saying it like it's a fan club and not a group of people who pay t- for a degree. <laughs> Yeah, there we're all go. brothers out there, Ryerson heads. Oh, we're boiling water in the uh, background here. This is <laughs> nice. This is a little sneak peek behind the scenes. Poke your head behind the curtain and see how we run Oz. See if the, Oz? <laughs> your little fa- favorite... Favorite, uh, you know what? I'm just listen to this. I'm pouring some tea right now. Oh, and he's and he's really giving you the live 3D, 4D experience. Actually, three. We cut three. out sight. <laughs> <laughs> but we're giving you sound. Uh, you can touch us. <laughs> you can touch the screen. And uh, you can also uh, taste. Smell? And smell. Smell. Yeah. There's a this smell. Really, this is you know, 1D. There's a, there's what a, am I doing? There's a, an, an, there was an ad on my Facebook uh, recently for a, um, a, a special speaker that would shoot air at you while you were playing first person video games Dear to give you God. yeah like warm or cold air as you're playing like counter strike so you could f- get more of an experience i don't that's like yeah those like right that's what i used to get you to do what? when i would play my early vids when yeah. i would play queen kong on atari <laughs> queen kong the guy whose nose is too long and it scoops up all his treats <laughs> that's cubert no, no, this was a knockoff. Queen Kong? Also for Atari. Atari itself produced two games simultaneously. <laughs> it was pitting creators against each other. There was Qbert, which really took off, and Queen Kong, the boy whose <laughs> nose is too long. Because <laughs> Qbert was like a fully alien creature, right? Yeah, and no, Queen it... Kong was just the boy who's a boy. So, like a Pinocchio type thing? No, like a normal boy. But his nose was too big. But you know how Pinocchio had a real pep in his step, and he was always like, I'll do it! Yeah. Well, this boy was. He was devastated 24 7. Something had happened to him. His nose was too long. And the only thing is, you have to navigate people who point that out. Doctors who want to give him a quick nose job, which he can't <laughs> afford. And then he has to scoop up things with his mighty, slightly prehensile nose. So, what? So the game was like a RPG kind of thing? No, no. It was sort of just like a side scroller or whatever the fuck you'd call that. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. But I would get you. I would position you near my chair. And okay. I would shackle you to the chair and force you to breathe on me every time <laughs> Quinn Kwong emitted a long sigh. I remember that actually now. Yeah. That's bringing back a lot of horrible yeah, that memories. that was my too. early foray into 4D. Have you ever done that? Like the, uh, the Indiana Jones ride at Universal Studios or wherever where you, you enter a certain level and then it's just like, uh, it's like, oh, bugs are getting on you. But really it's just a little air, sh- air shooting at a little... Uh, oh, I, I hate saw the, yeah. Star Wars Rogue One like in, theater, in a theater like that in, and in it that ruined everything. 4D box or something. Yeah. I saw um, like it was constantly Clash moving. of the Titans. <laughs> And Clash, like, yeah. air would shoot at my neck every time a gun went off, which was most of the movie. Yeah, that's, that's what a gun feels like. <laughs> yeah. just, a, just a cool breeze. <laughs> just a shot of air. That, yeah. they, they had chairs that moved when yeah. the camera would I got dizzy. move. Yeah. I had well, to it take just my felt glasses like... off and just close my eyes for 20 minutes in the middle. It just felt like someone was kicking my seat. It yeah. felt like some yeah. asshole was like shaking my yeah. shoulders while I was trying to watch this fantastic Clash of the Titans but movie. But I, I am glad I paid $50 for that. That, yeah, that was cool. 50, you paid fifty dollars. <laughs> close to forty. You guys are really just everything. telling two stories, just sort of sharing the time here. This is kind of weird and nice. <laughs> not a lot we're, of not a lot of listening going on, but I appreciate. I think we're on the same page. The yeah, you're thematically in the zone. I'm listening. You said you said I paid fifty. I said you paid fifty dollars. I oh, heard what he true. said. That's true. That was some good listening. I was listening. To I heard he said a word that repeated it, and I continued my story. I went to Clash of the Titans with you, Andy. You remember? Mm-hmm. I remember. We, yeah, I was an early foray into D box technology. And my favorite thing was that uh, if a god punched the earth and created an earthquake, that would shake your chair. 
But then if someone slammed a door, that would shake your chair. <laughs> and then if another person like clapped really loud, that would shake your chair. Well, that's all they really had. They couldn't, I mean, they yeah. didn't want forces of magnitude. But you get like, a couple <laughs> settings on that shake, though. Yeah. You can turn it down. Oh, really? Yeah. We eventually turned it down to zero. I turned mine down to a one and just let it shake me. And I truly closed my eyes and tried to sleep. <laughs> because Andy had just done a very bad uh, sketch show for, for Suits Yeah, ju- just Andy Just did. Andy. Just Andy did a very bad sketch show. And I was in the audience watching and I felt so bad. I got a contact high from his embarrassment. <laughs> that even though we had pre-booked tickets for Clash of the Titans. And we went to it and we sat through it. I just couldn't focus. Yeah, I felt too bad, so it I was, had to numb myself. Turn it down. Just, just die, baby. It, it was great. It was wonderful. Wow. Well, you know what today is? This is the first day of Christmas in a sense, because Santa Claus Parade on Bluer. I've never been, I've never seen the Santa Claus Parade. I haven't seen this one either. I used to take you to the uh, Krampus Parade, remember, when you were a little kid? Oh, yeah, yeah, that. That's why I never saw the Santa Claus Parade, because you took me to the fucking Krampus Parade. <laughs> yeah, I took you way north of Bloor to the Krampus Parade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where, yeah. the, where the, the Polish devil district. Krampus. Yeah, it was awful. Yeah, the Polish district. Yeah, was, I, yeah, I forgot. It was over on Roncesvalles. <laughs> Near three of the Polish bakeries where you, if you walk in and you're not Polish, they'll sell you what you want, but they'll fucking let you know you're not welcome. <laughs> in little Poland, Roncesvalles. Uh, Krampus Parade was a lot of fun. Do you ever go to that, Av? I've never been allowed to go to the Krampus Day Parade. Oh, it's so fun. There's Krampus himself up there with his animatronic slaves. <laughs> <laughs> and you submit a list of all of your child's flaws and he reads them out and laughs to all the gathered crowd. Yeah. Krampus is good. Y'all see that movie, Krampus? I did, actually. I saw Krampus. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I can't believe I did. I I was trying to scar you as a child. No, no, no. I know. And I I watched it later on, not when I was a kid. But but, And it did bring back a lot of memories. But yeah, that was not a very good movie. Was it a bad movie? Yeah, it was like trying to be too... It was... Oh, it was one of those like Sharknado things. Uh, ish, yeah. It, well, not real, not even. It was no, not it was. I think it was just turning a little bit too Sam Raimi type thing. So Sam oh, Raimi can do Sam Raimi. Bit camp, bit, yeah. But too camp, a little, little campy, yeah. Camp, but like Sam Raimi can do camp. Like fucking, he's so good at it. He did it. He does it. Sam Raimi's the king of it. Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness is incredible. Name a better movie where a guy <laughs> becomes so many versions of himself, but small, and there's a war. <laughs> It's down to Gulliver's Travels and Army of Darkness. And I dare you to pick Gully. I dare you to pick Gully. Gully? Gully Travs. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I thought there was another movie called Gully. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're remaking uh, Gulliver's Travel called Gully with Kevin Hart. <laughs> they're making him big because that's his fantasy. What the hell? <laughs> He's going to be Gulliver. And then all the other people are small. Oh, fuck it. Kevin Hart gets big. Everyone else gets small. <laughs> I mean, that's Wouldn't sort that just of, be Attack of the 50-foot Kevin Hart or something? Like, that's no. sort of just what Gulliver's Travels <laughs> is. He doesn't get shrunk down. He yeah. shows up and he's big. Mm-hmm. So you you mean, I just want so the, Kevin the premise Hart- of this movie is everyone in the world shrinks down? Like, in, like they're, they all get small and he stays the same size? Well, basically he goes to an island oh, he goes and... To an island. Uh, the Rock plays a very small person, which is funny because Rock Rock is usually bigger than Kevin Hart. Rock, not the Rock. And so this movie kind of like plays. It kind of knows what it's doing. It plays on that, and Kevin Hart this movie is you're, disc- you're inventing. It knows what it's doing. Okay. And also, this movie is uh, <laughs> taking donations. Any producers out there want to oh. submit to a Kickstarter? So your movie yeah. that you're, you're hoping to currently make. crowdfunding this movie, yeah. hoping to raise enough to hire both <laughs> Kevin Hart and The Rock. We it's only like need at least a couple hundred million. million dollars. Right <laughs> no, there. he wants to. He wants to hire Rock, which is <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, Rock Johnson, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toronto's <laughs> finest Dwayne the Rock Johnson impersonator. For the Toronto Wrestling League, now located at the Great Hall on King. <laughs> Oh, what a treat. We're all getting along so well. Which are, hey, oh, I just got it. This is total sidebar. Remember, remember? In the animated Gulliver's Travels, where he first like has dinner with like the tiny king and his tiny people. It's like the, the, the clip that gets used a bit. And he does he dances with them by using his fingers. 
Like he makes his fingers into like a dancing thing, and then he dances with like like one of the king's guys. You remember this? And then no. <laughs> anyway, that's not the weird part. That's just sort of a nice moment. But then this was in an age when every fucking animator was just so horny all the time. <laughs> like Betty Boop, you know that shit? Yes. Where every animator was like, mm, let me fuck it. So, <laughs> I drew it, let me have it. So, so this Colliver's Travels, his fingers are just doing a nice dance with like some other like uh, tiny guys. And then some lady, some tiny lady fucking falls in love with his fingers. And his fingers are like doing this like salsa <laughs> Like sexy dance, uh, I don't know. It's too much. It's fingers. <laughs> it's full <fuck>. person. <laughs> These animators. You know what was that animator's name? Fleischer. Is that who it was? I drew everyone with the massive pupils, and they're always going ga gong ga gong gong ga gong. They're all trying to fuck, and then you can always see him in the background of every drawing, going like. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We're all getting along so well, which is a goddamn shame. So it's probably a good time to remind you that Andy is a newfound men's rights activist. <laughs> that is not true. And now that I've poisoned the well just a little I bit. I don't. What? We're talking about movies. We're talking about acting. And that no better segue. Could have been cleaner, but I had to drop that little bit of poison. <laughs> no better time and no better way to introduce our guest, someone who I hope can help Andy on his journey towards... Acting success might have some tips, might have a bit more. It's Nikki Rocks, uh, a commercial actor. Wow. Hey guys, it's uh, so good to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here, Nikki. Of course. I, so, uh, oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I just want to say I'm happy again. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'm really positive. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off when you wanted to repeat yourself <laughs> <laughs> so shortly after the first time. Uh, so, Nikki, I've, I've, uh, you, you described yourself to me as a commercial actor, and I realized I don't quite know what that means. So I act in, uh, you know, you watch a commercial on TV. I, uh, I'm the, usually the guy, you know, on TV. Oh, you literally oh, act nice. in commercials. Correct. Yeah, exactly. I see. There's 30-second spots in between TV shows. Oh, yeah. No, I was, know what you, do, you do look familiar, but was, I can't place yeah, what, what, yeah. what commercials would I uh, I played a guy in a big diaper for Canadian <laughs> Tire. I was like mad that uh, you know I didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> you were mad that you didn't have any money, Canadian Tire. And I started crying, and then the guy comes in. He's like, you know, if you're, <laughs> uh, you can get fifty percent off if you bring in this coupon. And then I was satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. You, okay. Yeah. So you're yeah. like a baby man. I was a baby man in that, and then I played a guy in a diaper in uh, um, <laughs> McDonald's commercial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you upset about? <laughs> that one, I was upset because the coffee was too warm. <laughs> too, too warm. <laughs> you Not even cold <laughs> coffee. I wanted a little bit colder. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think and, I remember that commercial. Yeah. You were in the big diaper. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. How yeah. did uh, McDonald's make you feel better by the end of this commercial? A uh, guy came up. Real my back, told me I was a good boy, <laughs> told me I was smart. <laughs> oh, so this is sort of like a smiles and free campaign. Yeah, exactly. Like, whatever your problem will literally attend to you emotionally <laughs> at McDonald's. Yeah, it's true. Wow. Yeah, so that and was a big. Uh, that was a big one for me. Obviously, I'm almost like, remiss to ask. I'd be remiss not to ask. But is there a third example <laughs> <laughs> that is different but same? <laughs> Uh, you might be surprised. You, I was a voiceover actor too in some commercials, and I do in the voiceover booth wear a diaper. Just to <laughs> yeah. get that, you know my style. Uh, get that signature voice in there, and that was for Swiss Chalet, which is I don't know if you guys have international listeners, but that's like a barbecue place. Is barbecue that chicken, barbecue well, yeah. that. It's a I, chicken. If you get there, barbecue. <laughs> and you're, you walk in and you see someone with a sloppy apron tossing cornbread on your plate at Swiss Chalet. It's more just like, as I know, and I don't it's really weird. go to Swiss Chalet. Oh, but I Andy do. Loves it. Oh, I love it. It's like I know of it as like chickens rotating in a in a in a in a meat, rack. In yeah, a, just a rack of chickens rotating, and, and they just slop all, it on it's your all plate. A bit red and orange. Yeah, they just they just whatever you want, they'll give it to you. They slop do it slop it. They slop it. I don't think they, they slop it at Swiss Chalet. Don't they serve it? Well, they serve it, but it's, it's a chalet. Yeah, mm, not really. That's the craziest thing about Swiss Chalet is that while you're eating, so many people are skiing around you. <laughs> <laughs> right on, yeah, Young and Dundas, yeah. <laughs> downtown Toronto. Yeah. Every restaurant is, is on an Alp. <laughs> yeah, one of Toronto's five finest Alps. <laughs> Swiss Chalet's nice. 
What was that commercial? What'd you, what were you advertising on behalf of them on that day? So that one, I was actually really happy. I was saying uh, how much I liked, because they were starting this new barbecue chicken uh, ad campaign, which is why I thought it was barbecue. I see. And mm. uh, so my experience with, with Swish LA is mostly barbecue. And yeah, we were advertising the new chicken, tastes different, tastes better. Tastes different. <laughs> <laughs> that was their well, slogan. Tastes different. Tastes different. Tastes different, tastes better. Yeah, yeah. you know how this everything that barbecue. tastes the same is compared to chicken? <laughs> well, in this instance, even chicken tastes different from chicken yeah what was the difference smokier yeah a little bit smokier it tasted um like more salty <laughs> so they put more now salt with more on. salt yeah more salt <laughs> is there... swiss chalet just salt and gravy isn't that what people love about it don't they go gaga for gravy well the, yeah, yeah the great the, it's that, the, like the swiss chalet sauce. sauce they sell it at the grocery store too you can make your own swiss Ugh. chalet sauce that shit always disgusts me it feels like there's a <laughs> compartment of shame like, you go to McDonald's to get Big Macs and eat the Big Mac sauce, and that's where it lives, and that's where it dies. <laughs> and then having bottles of Big Mac sauce at a grocery store is just inviting horror into thine own home. It's <laughs> just depressing if you're going to get that. It's I pushing think. yourself down the wrong path. <laughs> it would be like inviting a, like a blackjack dealer into your bedroom after flying home from <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> That's where that should have ended. <laughs> Walk away. I've made it. You've made what? The Swiss chalet sauce. Have you? Yeah. I, I used to How'd buy it. How'd you do it? it? You, well, it comes in powder, and then you, you mix it with some hot water, and you stir it on the stove. Usually you're alone. And then you pour it, <laughs> you pour it on the chicken. It's great. You pour it in a mug and gulp <laughs> it. Drink it and oh, cry into yeah. it. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it, I there's don't nothing wrong with bad. that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Is there nothing <laughs> wrong with it? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Nice, <laughs> absolutely nothing. Nothing. As a spokesman There's, for Swiss LA, you're not I actually endorse it. <laughs> well, a spokesperson here. You are right. actually a spokesperson for them moving away from that. It sounds like <laughs> it's different. It's a different, but it's a different sauce. The powder, you know, it's still a powdered thing. Yeah, it you sounds like buy. your powder is a little powder called salt. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> you already said it. <laughs> you said it was I'll salt. never reconfirm. Wow. So, okay. So you are a, I'm going to say, at least borderline successful commercial actor in as much as we've seen you. You've had multiple gigs. Yeah, exactly. So my son, Andy, I mean, Andy, <clears throat> what the hell's happening in your acting career these days? Uh, are you acting? Not what not, the hell? Not, not, well, I'm not acting right now because I'm, I'm sort of focusing on just bettering myself and and whatnot. I just bettering your side. Well, in what way are you? I'm reading a lot. That? I'm like looking a lot of, at a yeah. lot of like YouTube how videos. How to better? <laughs> how to be an actor? I'm going to be taking some cl lessons uh, just to sort of refresh myself. I mean, the big problem with me that I always had was actually like the auditions. I really hated that. I couldn't. Uh, uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. It was very difficult oh, for me to get through that. You're talking about. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, <laughs> do you have are... any suggestions on how to deal with those auditions? Because I always get so nervous. And well, what happens when you get nervous? Well, my throat closes up, and I just kind of throat I closes up. <laughs> yeah. Is that because every time I pack you an audition lunch, I include one B, <laughs> to which you're deathly allergic? <laughs> Is it because of the B I pack for you? Yeah, it could be the one B you put in my fucking lunch, Dad. I'm trying to keep you on your toes. It's like method. It's the method. If you're afraid of the B, you're going to bring that fear into the way you perform your fear of not having a, an inflatable pool during pool season in your neighborhood for John's Pools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's kind of the same uh, method that you know a lot of actors use. They they bring in stuff from their real life, bring it into the audition, uh, and you know just be confident, be positive, walk in there with a smile, and <laughs> just be like, "My name is Andy, and I'm here to impress you." That's what you say. Wow, no, I I can see that somehow working for you, <laughs> and in no way working for Andy. You that just described a psychotic performance. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't think that that's really my me that would work for me. I think people would would be off would be put off, but if I if I came in when yeah, Andy, and your deal's more like sweat, apologize, sweat, struggle, beg for a second chance, yeah. <laughs> thank them for their time. <laughs> I mean, basically, yeah. Okay, well, have you gone out for any commercial auditions recently, or any auditions in general? Um, I, I did audition. I auditioned for a. I remember I auditioned for a. Uh, it was a soda commercial. And I had to, uh, I did act uh, opposite a fireman for some reason, but there was no fireman, so there was there was just a tennis ball, and I had to um, talk at the tennis ball. Right. But it was very difficult. You kept addressing him as tennis ball. Yeah, <laughs> tennis ball. What do I do with this fire? 
<laughs> Wait, were they going to CGI the fireman? <laughs> no, it wasn't the actual commercial. It was just an audition, and they just they were just like, this is where the oh, right, right, fireman right. will be. Right. Talk to the fireman. It was actually in the real commercial. They ended up using a real fireman, and then CGI in the end, just <laughs> some tennis balls. They decided halfway through to make it a commercial for tennis. Wilson balls. In fear in a fire, but, and you want a game. <laughs> There's no ball like Wilson balls. Well, what do you think of that? What Andy just described. Have you, have you ever had to perform across from not a human? Yeah. And how did you handle it? Well, so I go in there, again, with a positive mindset. I go in, big smile on my face, and I'm just ready for whatever they throw at me. So if including I Including a tennis ball. <laughs> including a tennis ball. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes they'll throw a little piece of paper at me. If I'm doing badly, the director will scrunch it up, be mad. But you're ready. But I'm ready. And I'm you like, can deal with that? I go, thank you very much. I understand what I did wrong. Let me do it again. And then I sort of do it in a more, again, more positive way. You just wow. got to be more positive. More positive. I'm more yeah. positive. You wear, Bigger smile. Do you wear the diaper in the <laughs> audition? Yeah, are you or just diaper all the time? You coming in with that diaper confidence? I go in with that diaper confidence, and I know that if I make a mess, it's all taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I'm really not thinking. I'm only focused on the lines. You have, you, have, you done, have you done anything without a diaper? Smart. Like any commercials without diapers? Um, I've done... <laughs> I used to go in without a diaper, and you know, obviously, I, then I would. Well, then you shit yourself. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, I can see how that would be worse. And that would, yeah. So you're basically saying and I, I would should lose wear a confidence diaper. almost immediately. Yeah, that would do it. Yeah. So the diaper is really a symptom of the fact that you shit yourself whenever <laughs> you perform. Yeah, well, it's because I get a bit nervous. <laughs> So the nerves, so this is a coping mechanism. Now, yeah. can I say, mm. there are sleek adult diapers that fit <laughs> under pants. You can still be clothed. Are you serious? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I'm surprised you've never done a commercial for one or seen a commercial for, yeah, for one. Yeah, like Depends. You've never heard of Depends? You've never heard of Depends? Depends uh, diapers. No, I've heard of Pampers. <laughs> um. So these are not for babies. Wait, how are you fitting into non-adult diapers? <laughs> You uh, are a tall man. Yeah, I'm tall, but I'm slender. So it's mostly, yeah. you know, they don't. it doesn't matter if you're like a tall baby. It just sort of matters how, high, how wide your hips are. No, it's a combination <laughs> of things. If you're a 6'3 baby, you don't fit into extra large pampers even. It's not curly <laughs> hips. Well, okay, that's fair. I do use a belt, <laughs> like a standard belt. <laughs> Wait, oh, to good. make it tighter? <laughs> Do you take a bunch of them and put them together? Is that how it works? What, like, I mean, I, yeah, it's, sort you're of describing... ripped, it's sort of ripped at the top. It's like I really just put them on and then it's ripped at the top and then I so, use a belt to tighten if it. If it's so it. tight that you're wedging yourself into it, can I just promise you that anytime you're shitting, it's noticeable? <laughs> like, if these are fitting like tight underwear. The difference in shape once you fill it with shit would be noticeable to one and all. Well, okay, fair point, fair point. I would say that that's also even more impressive, that you noticeably shit yourself and you still get the role. That's, yeah, like, I they can to, tell. He must be the best actor in the world. <laughs> well, I mean, he shit think. himself, but let's give him that role. Yeah, I think it does come, it, it's a little bit different than anybody else who goes in there. I haven't seen anybody else with a diaper yet. Uh, so it's your thing. So it's kind of yeah, my signature. You know how like cool. that Verizon guy had those like black rim glasses. Okay, and mm. yeah, yeah, so it's kind of my version of that. The uh, the what's his name? Who's Can the you guy? hear me now, guy? Right. Who was the guy was with Sprint? Who was the guy we were all going Gaga for because he was sloppy like a couple oh, years ago? What? Like the, the guy from ex- no, no, not Expedia. What's Trivago. Oh, oh, Trivago. Yeah, yeah. Where everyone was like, he looks unprepared. Let's make him a star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he hasn't everyone shaved. Was what so hunk. mad that he didn't wear a belt. Yeah. Oh See? yeah. That's why that's part of the he's, reason I started wearing He's immensely it, popular, though, apparently, like with with like it's some demo. I saw a sponsored ad for his country album that's coming no, out. No, for real. No, I what? swear to God, I no. forget his name, but you wow. drank this. I, no, I swear to God, that he has oh, an album fuck. coming out. God, and he just spilled uh, everywhere. He couldn't believe. I was trying this. to do it quietly <laughs> so he could tell the story. Couldn't he believe it. It was about search for this country. album. Uh, but yeah, look it up. Travago guy, singer, songwriter yeah. album. Hey, well, I, I forgot to shave a bit and now I'm famous. <laughs> 
and I didn't wear a belt, and now I'm famous. <laughs> but that's Think a, about how hard you try in your life. I didn't try that hard. <laughs> I mean, he really, that's the dream for all us commercial actors. And also shows that commercial actors are more than commercial actors. We also sing country sometimes. <laughs> yeah, truly diverse souls. <laughs> Do you have a side gig? Uh, no, but I am looking into maybe getting, you know, into commercial writing and directing. Mm. Kind of now that I've seen how it's done behind mm. the lens. Yeah. You like so you love commercial. You don't. World. You don't want to. You don't mm. want to move on to something else. You just want to stay in the commercial lane. Is that? Uh... It's quick. It's easy. The pay's pretty good. Yeah, I, want, I think I want to well, stay there. Commercials are almost better than uh, movies now. Commercials are funnier, funnier, funnier than movies. High, high they're quality. Yeah. Truly, I am not going to honor this opinion <laughs> from either of you. You ever seen a Geico what? commercial? Those things are amazing. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a funny. big fan of. Uh, <laughs> A coy Australian, <laughs> barely Australian lizard. <laughs> Saying something about your tire inflation. That is not whatever. Australian. These things way. look like I think it's British. He's not Australian. Is he British? Yeah. I think it's so. like a Cockney accent. Yeah, you know, you know what they say? Brits. Barely Australian. Not quite. <laughs> Didn't get all the way there. Trying, still trying. I didn't know that. He's Cockney. Yeah, he's not. He's definitely not Australian, oh, man. That's why it's always sounding I know weird Australian accents, and that is not Australian. You know. Uh, what the <laughs> hell was that? What do you mean? I just know I Australian know accents. Australian accents. Taps the he tip of his nose. I, twice, I just like. Winks at me, I'm puts a on a fedora, of, and leaves. I'm a big fan of Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Are you? Yes. <laughs> why? We've Crocodile Dundee 1 before. and 2. You've not. You, I've seen that scene from Crocodile Dundee With 2. With the knife. No, well, no, that's no, not two. One. one. One is the knife. Yeah. Well, that's the scene you're talking about. I was talking about something else. What <laughs> scene are you talking about? Well, no, let's talk about the knife scene, your favorite scene in film. I, I, Where we learn that that is not a knife, however, this is a knife. It's an awesome <laughs> moment. Yeah, that you love that moment? Awesome. Yeah, the, the guy is like, the guy's like, I don't know, he, he's like 45, he looks like leather, he looks like he should not be a movie star, really. <laughs> yeah. And then he just pulls, he looks such charm, he pulls out this big knife. Yeah, the big and machete. Yeah, the big machete. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then he's, well, it was kind of a machete, it's just a big, oh, you know, just Australian a big knife. knife. Yeah. And then he scares the, uh, the, the I guess they were... Muggers? Yeah, yeah the ethnic the thugs. thugs. Well, yeah, I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> it's scared they away were... by this overweight white man from down under. Yeah. What, a, what a triumphant <laughs> moment. It was a different time. Truly it was, because do you remember the scene in Crocodile Dundee number two, where no. he just outs a transgender person, and then the whole bar <laughs> cheers, oh, and then he gets oh drinks. Oh, God, am I defending Crocodile Dundee 2? I am not. All That's right. Favorite no, movie. don't remember Crocodile Dundee 2. Don't remember it. Somehow, Andy's favorite movie, in order, Crocodile Dundee 2, then no, Crocodile I Dundee 1. Do not remember that then scene. Then The Crying Game. No. Then Ace That's Ventura, just, just the end yeah. part. <laughs> I don't remember Crocodile Dundee 2. I take it back. That is not a movie that I That's the I only enjoy. part I've seen. I'm sure the rest of it is yeah. charming as hell. I'm sure it's an even <laughs> older Australian man sauntering around his native land, really giving it to people with slightly different opinions than Crocodile him. Dundee 2 was, it did have its problems because the Crocodile Dundee 1 was great because it was a fish out of water kind of story. Mm. And then Crocodile Dundee 2 was said in It was like, yeah, was fish that. back in, in water. water. So it was, yeah, it was not as... <laughs> Nothing better. Yeah. Nothing better than seeing a fish swim in the way it was meant to, <laughs> going about its day-to-day. And still we're supposed to believe it's a bit different. How did we get onto the Dundies? Australia. Oh yeah, you know Australian accents. Do your Australian accent. Oh, I can't do one. Yeah, the, 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 it's very hard. I can do Irish or Scottish, but okay. I can't do. All right, let's hear those. I can do Irish. You just have to say uh, you have to say um, five words. Uh, five is on the right side of time. Five is on the right side of time, oh, and then you nice. do that. That's soothing. That's not bad. Mm-hmm. That's soothing. What did you yeah. think of that, Nikki? Was How was that, that? If I had that to go in for you? yeah, I think if that was your one line in the commercial, I think you'd nailed it. Yeah, in yeah. case you were, uh, <laughs> in case <laughs> you were doing a, a commercial for five being on the right side of time, <laughs> <laughs> you would absolutely smoke it. <laughs> and it also had to be done in an Irish accent. Yeah, <laughs> I guess right. so that would be part so of it. So there's too. a lot. You could do like an Ireland uh, come to Ireland commercial if for some reason they didn't want to hire an actual Irish person. <laughs> They're in short supply nowadays. You ever done a tourism ad, Nikki Rocks? No, I would love to though. I love uh, touring, being a tourist. <laughs> you oh you you tour about? <laughs> I tour about. Where's you know. what's a good place that you've been? Oh, I went uh, down under. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh, <laughs> drag oh, us Australia, back, back to it, that. Back it to Australia. <laughs> well, yeah, I just didn't want to. You know, I I didn't want to 
you know, interrupt your conversation or anything. But yeah, I've been to Australia and like, you know, six for, I stayed there for six years just as a tourist. <laughs> Walking wow. around. You moved to Australia. You really did. Well, see everything. Was, uh, yeah, I was backpacking for six years mm-hmm. in one country. One I don't think country. that counts as backpacking. I had a, I think you were a that's like homelessness. For six years. That's homelessness. <laughs> you got, you were a homeless man in no, Australia. I rented, I rented a house. <laughs> okay. And I stayed there for six years. I worked as an accountant. And it was but great. You, I just got to experience the country. But you owned a backpack. I owned. I owned. Well, no, I didn't own a backpack. But I owned. In what way were you backpacking? Uh, it's just sort of. That's just sort of slang for for moving somewhere. That's yeah. Australian slang for moving somewhere. Yeah, backpacking. you're a backpacker. So Australia, I don't know anything about it. I know they got fosters. They, they got, got big fosters. old bugs and and snakes to worry about. Kang- kangaroos. Kangaroos. They call them roos. You ever seen a? I thought they called them kangas. No, that's uh, the, those hats. The they kanga kangs. Oh, oh, kangals. 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 Yeah. But they call them kangas there. Everything's. Everything's uh, slightly different. Yeah. yeah, and shorter. They do a lot of nicknames. Oh yeah, they call them sunnies. Sunglasses or sunnies. There you go. So what, what what's some fun slang that you learned when you were down under? That's a fun topic. Um, I would say that uh, the the Ruvner's in. That's a good one. What's that mean? <laughs> it means um, what's on what's on TV. What? Just say. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? That was longer. <laughs> you said everything got shorter. That was much longer and clearly British, but also gibberish. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna quiz you. I'm gonna I'm okay, gonna give yeah. you a couple this Australian be, slangs. Be, and you can tell me. Everardo's shine. He's getting into the game. Business. Sorry, man. My sons are competing. Oh. And I'm gonna. T- you can tell me what it what it is. Okay. okay yeah. This will be good. All right. Um. <clears throat> what's uh? What's brekkie? Brekkie, that's, uh, people call it breakfast here. Oh, very good, very good. Oh, it doesn't even say it's breakfast. People call it, bre- <laughs> he's identifying with the Australians. What's, <laughs> what's a cobber? A cobber, uh, that's like, um, a cobbler, like a guy, a shoe cobbler. Yeah, they just <laughs> they pronounced just the L. Yeah. 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 That's, dropped, big, that's very big in Australia. They dropped the L and made it a second B. <laughs> it, it, it says it's a very good friend here, but maybe you're right. I uh, know. no, I think I am right. Okay. What yeah. site is this? Uh, this is nomadsworld.com oh yeah I don't know if I trust either of these sources the site or this I mean if it was an Australian liar sitting across from me if it was an Australian website it'd be nomadsworld.com.au no I don't think it would be .com.au I think wouldn't it just be .au go to australia.com.au and hopefully in Canada it's .ca it's not .com.ca Okay, go to a different site. No, yeah, just <laughs> go to as many sites as you can to make this correct. And his internet must be broken. Maybe I just misspelled Australia. Hold on. That could be it. Uh, okay, let's do more slang. Let's do more slang. I want to do one more slang. Yeah, yeah. Give was, him one more slang, Andy. Uh, Give me some slang. That's uh, that's also Australian. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, a guy I know talk like that in Australia. Oh, you just knew like uh, that right. I was just the Mexican mouse. <laughs> From Disney cartoons or whatever. Okay, yeah. what is a mozzie? A mozzie. Oh, I mean, a mozzie. <laughs> that's a that's a fun <laughs> that's a fun teenager slang for a mausoleum, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where you're going to visit your dead family members. <laughs> Let's head down to the mozzie and see how old uh, Grimps is hanging heading <laughs> up. Me nan. Me nan. <laughs> Put some sunnies on me nan. <laughs> okay, <laughs> rotting corpse. Mozzie is a mosquito. Oh, a mosquito. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this one, this one you'll get. Right. Maccas. Maccas, that is that's McDonald's. All, that's all the Paul McCartneys in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they call it. If you see a group of Paul McCartneys, those are the Maccas. That's Here right. they come, forming five versions of wings. <laughs> <laughs> is it McDonald's? Yes. It is, is it really? Yeah. You, How you knew that? And, you know, they don't have Burger King down there. <gasps> they call it, or they do have Burger King, but it's called... Burger Royale. It's called like with Burger. Uh, it's not called. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's called, they just stole it from. Oh wait, Paul Burger Christian. Jacks. No, Hungry Jacks. That's Hungry Jacks. Hungry Jacks. Instead There's, of Burger King. But they have the monarchy. I know because there is a there was a Burger King before the oh. American one that existed there. So they didn't want to, and that guy didn't want to sell the rights or something. Oh shit. So yeah, Burger King became Hungry Jacks. That's true. So they just started great. a new restaurant for... Yeah, do they have pizza. like Whoppers on Hungry Jacks? <laughs> do they call it a Whopper? I think they do call it a Whopper, to they be honest. They call it also a, a Royale with cheese. <laughs> 
okay, so so let's 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 refocus this here. Okay. Because it's not every day we get someone who's successful in the acting world to to here to give my gorgeous boy tips on how to get ahead. Now Andy clearly, as he mentioned, he's been pulling away from the game. Yeah. He's in his head. He's nervous. You talked about having a thing, you got your diaper. Yeah. Your subtle, sleek diaper that you fill with shit. <laughs> 100% of the time when you're auditioning or performing. That's Does right. Andy need a thing? Is that what he needs? Yeah, a signature. That could be a thing. Maybe you wear, uh, you put like um, a feather behind your ear. Now, how does that sound to you? Wow. Uh, what would that you, do? Andy? I'm just curious why a feather. Sets you apart. Gives okay. you maybe a mental edge. Maybe you're like, I have this, as long as I have this feather, I'm okay. So like, are you talking about like a Steven with, Tyler sort of thing? Or like a, yeah. oh, I thought you was, I was picturing like a dandy or something like that, like a giant feather <laughs> with a cap or something like that. Oh, you no, want it in your cap like oh, Yankee yeah. Doodle Dandy. Yeah. yeah. No, not like that. No, no. No, okay. All right. Saying, no, just woven into your hair like old Steven Tyler. Yeah, exactly. Maybe actually dress more like Steven Tyler. So you want me to dress up like Steven Tyler? Yeah. Like we want you to stars. dress up like an ant from the 60s, <laughs> yeah. who's also sort of a cursed gypsy from a Stephen King novel. <laughs> <laughs> and bring in a microphone with uh, a bunch of uh, handkerchiefs attached to it. Exactly, yeah. Okay. yeah. Sure. And then that'll really, you know, if they're looking for a Steven Tyler type, I think that will set you apart. Yeah, Andy, I think you should just totally redo your vibe as Steven Tyler-esque. Okay. Are you prepared for that? No, I'm not Are you prepared to look like an You're elderly not? woman who's also a horse for a bit? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, and that's insulting to Stephen Tyler. He's a great musician. So. God. Oh, is he? Yes! We got a Stephen Tyler <laughs> fan Stephen on Tyler our hands. Stephen Tyler is really good! Stephen Tyler. What, yes. is, what, what I, are your favorite... I only like the new stuff. But yeah. The I, new stuff. I like the middle new stuff. I like Eat the Rich. That was good. Amazing is a great song. Eat the Rich. Yeah, I'll never forget Andy's... The poster Andy had covering his entire wall of the cow with the pierced udder. <laughs> a little earring in its udder. And Andy would look up. It was, it was on his ceiling at night. And then he would look up on it and pray for it to fall on him. Utter first. So he could suck the teat of his favorite band's <laughs> cow. Fucking Aerosmith is... And they, they I once walked forever. in on you sleeping. And you were muttering the words, Oh, I hope one day I get to suck the teat of my favorite band's cow. Oh, that's a real cow. long thing to say while I'm sleeping. I couldn't sleeping. believe it. I was like, this guy's awake for sure. There's no way. You want it to be heard. <laughs> Do you remember when I caught, when I had to come pick you up at that farmer's uh, farm? One time, because you went with all those, yeah. okay. all those boys were cow tipping, but then the farmer caught you because they all tipped and ran, and then the farmer caught you slowly piercing that cow's udder <laughs> with I, a machine you stole from Claire's. Honestly, I <laughs> I thought you were going to say I was sucking on it, so that's actually better. Yeah, yeah and then you were going to, you were like, I'm going to pierce, and then when the farmer caught you, you are like, wait, 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 I'm just going to pierce this, then I'm going to have a quick suck, <laughs> then I'll be out of here. And he was like, no way, or whatever, I don't know. Second hand. <laughs> <laughs> this who, is all who second told hand. You this? It's all hearsay. I, I cobbled it together through accounts from you and the farmer and uh, five of the boys that had watched you from afar in horror. <laughs> they were dream, like, "Tell me, Dream On isn't a good song? Dream On's pretty fun. Dream On is good. 1973. Dream, dream On. Dream On. Dream On. Yeah. yeah. Andy and loves Dream On. They've just reinvented themselves so many times. Oh yeah, nothing better. <laughs> Did Nothing they reinvent better. themselves? They did. I mean, Dream On. Listen to Dream On and listen to Eat the Rich. Keep having albums that were the same, <laughs> but a little worse each time. Yeah, it's funny that in each phase of their reinvention, they were just like, here's our literally our new sound. It's the sound of the song Crying. And now eight other songs are going to sound like this song until we learn a different song. But Crying is different than Dream On, for sure. Crying's different than Dream On, but sure. It but it's the same line? as like Amazing and Crazy and whatever the other fucking songs were on that album, the music videos for which were exclusively his own daughter looking hot. That's not, tr- that's not true. Alicia Silverstone was in. That's oh, you're not right. Daughter. His daughter yeah. and his daughter's friend. <laughs> and that's what made her famous. Alicia Silver. The, 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 uh, the, the song, Crazy, I think it was. It was uh-huh. uh, yeah. What point are you making here? <laughs> I'm just saying Alicia Silverstone wouldn't have a career without Aerosmith, and we all love Alicia Silverstone, obviously. Okay, yeah, you do I speak for all of us there. <laughs> she yeah. played uh, Bat Spider Girl. Spider Shagged Me. What's that? that she played Bat Girl? I don't think <laughs> she was in Spider Shagged Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of Heather not, Graham. Yeah, that's uh, not Alicia Silverstone. Uh, she was in Clueless, man. She, she did kind of like an Alicia Silverstone tribute. Bat Spider Girl. Shagged Me. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> An Alicia Silverstone tribute. <laughs> Heather Graham did her, in the Her spy. performance is very Silverstone-esque. No, and it's not. I think I read that in the trades. The trades. 
<laughs> I hate you more and more. What are we talking about? Aerosmith. I don't know. You're right. a fan of the new Aerosmith. What's the new stuff? Um, I couldn't tell you any of the names of the songs, but it's probably something like probably. Missing You or <laughs> Won't Go Back Again or something. Andy's favorite song of all time is uh, Walk This Way with Run DMC and Aerosmith. Oh, he that, it's again, fun. That again, again. They, were, they were on a, on a downturn. Yeah. No one cared about Aerosmith. That's Run DMC brought them back. They reinvented themselves. Mm. I mean, Rock and Rap, that, that video is amazing. Them. Remember? Other people reinvented them. <laughs> they didn't no, reinvent they themselves. Went, they, they, they reached out to Run DMC and were like, please help us. No, they didn't. <laughs> Although Steven I would Tyler love that narrative. <laughs> Rev Run. <laughs> And he would, there'd be no uh, Lincoln Park or Limp Biscuit without that. Is that. true. There, there you go. go. Infamous collaboration. Infamous. That, uh, that, you there'd know, be the no video. Lincoln Park and Jay Z. That's true. That infamous collaboration. That's true. With, yeah, fi- no, finally something we can agree on. Without Run DMC and Aerosmith coming together, there would truly be no Linkin Park and Jay-Z <laughs> combining for, what was that song? Numb slash Encore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a nightmare that was. Even at the time, right away, everyone knew this was bad. <laughs> At the time, I begged my parents to buy me that CD. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. I need it. How You were not that young. (laughs) That wasn't that long ago. I was about 16. No, you (laughs) weren't. I wasn't 23. 24. (laughs) 24. (laughs) And it was low on cash. I begged my mom to (laughs) take me to HMV. That was the peak embarrassing moment for Jay-Z. That was right around the time when he came out with Death of Auto-Tune. Remember that? Remember that song? It was like all these rappers are doing auto tune, and like everyone seemed fine with it, except for like old people were like, "This isn't music." And then Jay Z just made that he sided with the old people. It was very funny. <laughs> Do you remember the chorus? This is death of auto tune. Moment of silence. Na 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 na. Oh, it was shit. Andy, I've, you like that song? I don't know it. It was shit. Okay, I sort of revealed my hand. I played my hand too much there. <laughs> I'm older than all that. I used to write jingles for oh, commercials. Right. Yeah, yeah. And um, my, the best one was, what was the, uh, the one that I wrote for, um, fuck, what was that? Uh, it was the bread, Ben's Bread out in Halifax. Ben's Bread. Nova yes. Scotia. <laughs> Halifax, Ben's Nova bread. Scotia, Ben's Bread. Very popular. A lot of people know Nova it because Scotia. you can smell it. Uh, and if you buy it, you almost instantly regret it. It molds so fast. <laughs> it molds so fast and, you t- and it melts in your mouth instantly. It's yeah, just, it's melts. not really. It's bread. not really. Yeah, yeah. Like bread. It melts yeah. the way yeah. you're like, does bread do this? <laughs> yeah, I don't think this is bread. Yeah. Kind of like cotton it's candy. A, it's like cotton candy. It's like yeah. With no taste yeah. at all. It's really interesting because it's the kind of bread where it's the, Halifax is the only city where you see people racing to the grocery store because you know if you're a bit late, other people will get oh, all man. the other breads. <laughs> and you'll be stuck with Ben's. And that was the, the message behind this uh, commercial. It was, uh, so you want to eat some toast or whatever. Sandwiches are nice. You're going to need some bread for that. And Ben's is bread. <laughs> oh, that's... <laughs> just that reminding what, people yeah, that, that Ben's that is technically is that bread. Is the apostrophe in Ben's <laughs> bread is for? Yeah, Ben's is. Yeah. <laughs> the apostrophe is for Ben's is. And then in brackets, bread. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was, yeah, that was a campaign when people were starting to legitimately say much as we've just said. I think Ben's isn't bread. <laughs> And they're like, we have to reverse <laughs> we the did. discussion. They were just like, they, they, there were some conversations about how coy they wanted to be about it. And they were like, no, a straight shot is the smoothest, the cleanest. <laughs> Let's just say straight up, yes, Ben's bread is bread. <laughs> then, uh, of course, I did commercials for... Casino Taxi, too. Casino Taxi. Weird. Yeah, I remember that. Halifax's yeah. favorite taxi service. These are mostly Halifax commercials. This is why we were living out in Halifax. Living Halifax. You did a lot of local commercials, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was a local guy, and I was non-union, and I was vocally anti-union, and I was a scab. <laughs> <laughs> so I got hired for a lot of shady gigs that paid me way too little, with no residuals and no benefits, and I thanked them for every penny. And I literally licked their boots to get every gig that I got. I licked shit off the boots of the shadiest upstart boutique companies in Halifax. And then I stood right there with them hand in hand as they petitioned very willing governments year after year to keep the unions out of our lives. Keep, keep people's hands out of my pockets and keep my hands wrapped around the ankles of the rich 
people whose boots I'm literally licking. So anyway, I did the casino taxi ads. Non-union, got paid 40 bucks. They played for 12 years. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty bad deal. <laughs> it was good, and I thanked them for it. I used that 12 bucks to buy myself a fucking... Uh, no Boot licking course on <laughs> Masterclass online. Online? Yeah. This is early days of Masterclass. Oh, yeah. And early days of online. This was DOS. Yeah, yeah it was DOS. You actually had to type in all the, the, the IP and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, someone who promised me they were Aaron Sorkin. Because <laughs> <laughs> all text, I guess. This was early days Sorkin, too. It was early days everything. So anyway, I made these commer- uh, casino taxi ads, and they were a treat. It was, uh, that at the time, because their name was a bit confusing, it was Casino Taxi. They were trying to clarify all that. I was like, we're not a casino, we're a taxi. So we're not a casino. You know we're a taxi. So it was, you know, it was a good... That was the jingle. Straight shot. Straight shot. And then we did subsequent ones where it was, uh, Come on down. We'll give you a ride. You don't need to run. You don't need to hide. We're not criminals. We're not out for blood. We want to give you a ride for a very fair rate. Tip our drivers or they'll kill you. No, they won't. (laughs) That's nice. And kind yeah. of on a, a bit of a joke. It's a little mm. cheeky, yeah. yeah. And that was at the time when the casino taxi uh, logo mascot was a guy holding a knife, but just like making him an expression like, he's just like, kidding. Yeah. I would never use yeah. this. <laughs> but he's holding it up like he's going to stab you. Yeah, yeah, and if and you look in the background, in the very soft blood. focus, there's a cake that I guess he's going to actually use it on. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. it's super and be- hard to and see. And right behind that, there's a body. Yeah. And you're not sure if they're sleeping <laughs> yeah. getting, or, or if they're dead. Yeah. yeah. Casino Taxi at the time was, other t- taxi companies aren't this confusing. <laughs> Casino. <laughs> And it was always like they had it rigged up. It was so funny. They had it like things rigged up in the trunks of each cat taxi. So as it drove, you would hear banging and muffled cries. It's kind of like the 4D experience. Yeah. It was a uh, true 4D experience. Of riding in a taxi. Yeah. Do you remember and, that uh, there was a, a cab driver in Halifax who would make people try on gloves for them? What? That sounds like he's trying oh, to get yeah, some that real. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reality of Halifax is that Cab's situation is really well, is fucked Sometimes up. Sometimes he yeah. would take you where you needed to go, but you would have to try on these leather gloves. What yeah. the yeah. hell? Is he Did framing he want you people? To, yeah, buy them or to just get your fingerprints no. inside? He's those. for sure no, no. licking the insides of those gloves it and was, jerking off into the other gloves. He would the get glove. guys to, to, to wear them, right? It was just like, hey, just, just mm-hmm. can you just. Put these gloves on for me. And nice. like he was like, beautiful gloves. That's yeah. straight up Cronenberg <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's... Like it's not sex, but it's sex. Yeah, that's fucked. Yeah, it's yeah. fucked. I've never ex- experienced it myself. But I've just, I've just read oh, on man. forums. Halifax has some weird stuff. There's the, there was the sleep watcher. There was a guy who just went around and like yeah. just would watch women sleep. Jesus Christ. And yeah, you never heard of sleep watcher. But there are no. famous no, yeah. criminals for like years. <laughs> women would, yeah, like oh, yeah. college age women. He would just, they would wake up and there'd be this in their house, so, in their there, room. There was there was Jesus. one in the room. Yeah, Sometimes they would, he would be outside and just kind of staring. And, and they never caught him. They never really caught him, no. Yeah, and I haven't slept watched since. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it's me, yeah. the sleep watcher, a.k.a. Glove Man. I'm both. <laughs> I'm both. We solved two crimes today. That's great. Yeah, and of course I did an ad for... Halifax Crime Stoppers when they were trying to catch Glove Man and Sleep Watcher. <laughs> and... At the time, there was a big outcry. Crime Stoppers is, first of all, a serious organization. Please don't besmirch the seriousness of this with a jingle. And if you're going to do that, please don't make it coy or funny in any way. I don't know why. This was the conversation I was like, yeah. we don't know why we're getting this. Someone at the top wants this, but please do it justice and take it seriously. These are crimes. These are real people. There are real victims here. Please give us something serious. So I did what I could. And I created the jingle. Crime Stoppers in Halifax. We need your help and we need it quick. You gotta help us. You gotta help us. There's a sleep watcher on the loose. And a glove guy who will give you a ride for a very fair price. Just put on the glove. Put on the glove. Just put on the glove. And the ride is free for you, young man or girl. Okay. 
It sounds like you're promoting At the, end. the glove watcher. <laughs> it's like we got to catch a sleep watcher, watcher guy, but the glove guy is just going to give you that right on your stomach. That was the first piece of criticism I received. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, because that's what it sounds the like. The message boards lit up. They signed the company signed off on it because they wanted the guy at the whoever was at the top, who it was later revealed was prime suspect to be Glove Man Sleepwatcher. <laughs> he wanted it, but yeah, that was the biggest piece of criticism. Was yeah, this sort of is an ad for us, but then it's very clearly an ad for Glove Guy at the end. <laughs> but I did what I could, you know. Sometimes you got to follow your muse, and in that moment, my muse said, you know. Try it out in earnest and then do a quick 180. Call it a day. <laughs> I guess Glove Guy's not that bad, really. I feel I mean, like... I don't know. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to suss out the line of consent. How drunk are the people he's picking up? How much is he informing them about the sexual nature of what he's doing with this damn glove? I'm going to assume there was I, some yeah, details so left little, unspoken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can't imagine he's like, just put your hand in here because I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that was... Yeah. And then his eyes are popping out of his head. And he's going, good, 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 yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. That's nice. Well, rest in peace, Glove Man. We love you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we you're dead. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> Glove Man. Probably dead. Oh, man. Well, you know what? We, we got to zip forward here yeah, we gotta because go. we're, we're oh, chewing up time and we still haven't gotten to our favorite section of the show consistently <laughs> underwhelming an anti-climax made flesh <laughs> please give it up for everardo's games or whatever he decided to do this week yes yeah, so uh i can already see the tweets coming in the fans are probably gonna be a little upset i don't have a, a game per se this week but uh i have something fun i oh, uh, go figure okay like we mentioned, I am in Ryerson podcast uh, program, and part of the program, I have to uh, make my own podcast. And so I figured while I'm already here at the studio, we'll just bang out an episode right now. Oh my god. <laughs> my, what? My new podcast, it's called uh, The Greatest Number in the World. And we'll just hold for the theme song. We what's, could just in, what's the theme song going to be? We'll just kind of play something. I don't know. Maybe we could get the rights to... To like a Rolling Stone song or yeah, something. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe we could get the rights to uh, Dream On. Dream On, yeah. yeah maybe. Anyway, cool. so um, this is a, a new podcast that I'm starting where I call The Greatest Number in the World, which of course is uh, 420-6969. Okay. And we'll just... I, I No area is, code, okay. <laughs> any area code, really. Every episode we try to do a different area code. Okay. And this is a number that I've always wanted to have for myself, so I'm just going to see who answers, and maybe if they'll somehow switch numbers with me, maybe we'll have to You're call You're going to call someone right now and ask them if you... Everardo, the call. most socially uncomfortable <laughs> man I've ever met, is going to do a prank phone call now. <laughs> and how are you going to... Do you even well, think about how we're going to record it? It's a serious question. Oh, it's a oh, serious question. I have no hard. idea I, if we'll be able to record it. Finally this earning the nickname of the boring jerky boy. <laughs> Everardo. <laughs> Go ahead, Em. I don't think you're going to get through without an area code, but give it a shot. Well, we'll just try Toronto area code 416 right now. Okay. See what happens. I guess I'll just throw this on. Yeah, give uh, it a speaker. shot. Throw it on speaker. See how this goes. Is anyone else nervous? No. No, no we're, no, we're sweating not. Sweating buckets. Four, one, six, four, two, zero, six, nine. Six, nine. Please leave your message after the tone. After leaving a message, you can this hang up well, or press pound for more options. Uh, hey there. Uh, this is Everardo Ramirez calling on behalf <laughs> of a podcast. And I am just wondering if you would like to change numbers with me. I love your uh, cell phone or landline number, whatever number this is. Uh, and maybe we can work out some deal where you kind of take my number, I'll take your number. Maybe we just switch phones, easy as that. Uh, you got to leave your number? So call me back at uh, 416-315-8310 and love to Jesus work out a deal with you. Christ. Oh, my God. That person just thinks they got a phone call from the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Well, I did mention I was from a podcast. Yeah, from a podcast. <laughs> a podcast, yeah. So, so, well, so I hope a... that affords me the prestige of 
being uh, among <laughs> literally everyone on earth at this point. And I did give my true number and true last name. As if we forced you to do this on the spot and it wasn't something you'd planned out. Yeah. Did you I, uh, did you try did you try a six four seven area code? See if that's Oh don't break the six. I just no, really, oh, we're no, gonna do another one. I we're just not gonna hold see it if for there's all right. We'll just do one more here, and then we'll come back next week, maybe find some new area codes. Yeah, maybe that's going to be the thing we keep doing. <laughs> Try your call again. <gasps> Votre ne peut être Looks like it's available. Like, we're so, learning some very obvious, easy things here. <laughs> you can just get that number. So we could just get that number. I should have uh, tried that first. Yeah, you probably should have tried that. <laughs> Go get the number. Let us know next week if you got the number. Should I try a different area code? No, <laughs> yeah. we're good. The number you, the, you have accomplished your goal. The number is available. <laughs> yeah, Get but, the uh, number. But I think there was such a big build up to him like always wanting this number, and now that it's so easily available, yeah. I feel like it's yeah. a bit disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. It's, you've solved your Act Three moment in Act One, and you don't know what to do with the rest of your life. <laughs> We could just go through Act Two again. You could do the Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you could pull the Jim Carrey, where you want to be a world famous, the top comedian. You accomplish that by twenty seven, and then you just slowly deteriorate <laughs> over the next seventy years of your life until you're painting bullshit and calling it con- you're calling it protest. That'll be nice. Yeah. Well, um, do you honestly, want- I thought this would last about twenty minutes. <laughs> Well, fortunately, we've chewed up time to this point, so that was a merciful tag. A little denouement of sorts, <laughs> in no way the climax, to get this back to film language, which I'm sure you understand acting, Nick. Yeah, I've done, uh, com- I call them little films. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, commercial. <laughs> 30 seconds. Little films. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been so nice to have you and to impart small wisdom to Andy. I think what we left with was Andy's going to tie feathers into his hair. <laughs> Yeah, that's and it. Smile and when you smile. And smile, be confident, yeah. feathers yeah. in the hair. Kind of yeah. like a boho look. That could work. Boho. I don't know what that means, but yeah, I'll look it up. Bohemian. Oh, bo- oh <laughs> all right. There it is. I know what bohemian <laughs> means. Do you so. know what hobo that's means? That's Australian slang. Boho. Uh, boho. Boho is Australian really? slang. Mm-hmm. Well, yet another little <laughs> tidbit on our way out. Shouting facts as he walks <laughs> through the door. That's, <laughs> Nick, that's the Nicky Rocks promise. <laughs> Truly everything he said he was on this podcast with no exaggeration or fibbing. Uh, Nikki, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much for having me. Is there, you know, in, in our very uh, awkward, wedged-in uh, shout-outs moment, would you like to shout-out any local comedians who you think are worth checking out and may have recently performed a set on Conan <laughs> O'Brien that can be checked out online? Yeah, I give a huge shout-out uh, to Nick Nemiroff. If you want to check him out, at Nick Nemiroff. That's nice. Yeah. You go on YouTube, type Nick Nemiroff, you find Conan. You find his Conan set, great set. Thanks, man. Great yeah. set. Um, I mean, thanks. He says, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, big exaggerated Max Fleischer style <laughs> wink, inspiring boners around the world. <laughs> If nothing else, remember the ultimate message. Just because you draw it doesn't mean you can fuck it. <laughs> the powers that be will keep you at bay. Cool world, this is not. All right, let's end I just this. want to say, uh, keep your ears out for my new podcast, Greatest Number in the World. Oh, God. Coming to, uh, that is behind the paywall on Stitcher Premium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a paywall. Uh, yeah, yeah, episodes angling. are only 15 seconds long, and there's only two of them. And you heard them both, but they will be behind the paywall. Wait, that was two episodes we just heard? <laughs> each call is an episode? Each call is its own episode, and it is efficient. And I mean, it's great. Well, that's all people want. People do, do people listen to, like, full... I've, I've never listened to... I really have never listened to a podcast. <laughs> oh, this is how they go, man. Yeah, this yeah. is what really it. You start out with best intentions, quickly lose your way, <laughs> and then tag it with the Shout out! Wow! What a fun time on behalf of Stefan, my gorgeous boy, Andy, Everardo, and our lovely guest, Nikki Rocks, commercial actor. Check him out. It will be impossible to miss in any variety of commercials unrelated to diapers. Watch for the guy standing in the center of the frame, shitting himself and being comforting. Thank you, I've been Rolly Bush, and uh, this is the podcast. Farewell! Farewell!